trade paperback, omnibus, deluxe edition, absolute. There are so many terms in the world of collected edition, and if you're not familiar, it can get a little overwhelming. So today, hang out as we take a look at the different types of collected editions that you can find out there on your shelves. Let's get started here. So when you talk about collected editions, there's a lot of different sizes out there that you might get. And it's kind of almost impossible to really kind of collect every single size and format here, just because there really are no guidelines for what can and cannot be printed. Um, however, there are a few terms that are pretty exclusive to specific formats, and that's what we're going to kind of take a look at today. Um, so you can see we've got a pretty good lineup here of different collected editions, starting with our standard trade paperback, going all the way up to the Marvel Gallery editions. Um, and so we're going to kind of talk about these in here and also look at some variations of these as well, uh, because sometimes you might see some things uh, maybe advertise a certain way that could be slightly different than what you've experienced in the past. So we'll take a look at a few different ones. Um, but let's start out by taking a look at our standard size editions. All right, so when we talk about trade paperbacks and standard size hardcovers, these are the two formats that we're talking um, about here. So trade paperbacks, this is a selection from Marvel's Epic Collection. So if you ever hear that talked about, then that is referring to this series of trade paperbacks here. So we have this Daredevil uh, edition here. This is uh, volume 14, Heart of Darkness. Uh, but most uh, trade paperbacks are going to be a size of about 10 and a quarter inches tall and about six and two thirds inches across. It might be slightly off from here or there, but that kind of gives you a, a general idea. Um, but obviously these are paperback. The cover is, you know, uh, just kind of a thicker paper than what's inside. And then you've got pretty kind of standard size artwork and everything inside. Um, this is really great for uh, an introductory point to a lot of books. If you're uh, kind of curious about a series, but not sure if you're gonna enjoy it that much or not. Then trade paperbacks are typically a good way to get in. You can get in to a lot of content for not a lot of money. Um, so for example, this contains, uh, let's take a look here. So we've got uh, Daredevil 271 to 282. So you've got about uh, 11 issues there, five and six. That's gonna put us up to 12 and 13. And the material for Punisher Annual number three, Incredible Hulk Annual 16, and Silver Surfer Annual number three. So there's a good bit of content here. You're looking at about 45 bucks, which is pretty standard for these epic collections. Um, you might find some that are a little bit less than that, especially if it's one of the older ones. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at for those. And then let's take a look at the standard size hardcovers. So this is Superman, the Man of Steel, volume one. Uh, I really wish these were in deluxe edition or omnibus, but they are not. <laughs> but this is from uh, the John Byrne run here. But these are just slightly bigger than the trade paperbacks. These normally run about 10 and a half inches tall and about seven inches across. Again, very close to the standard size format like they were when they were printed. Um, normally just kind of the same material that you would find inside of there, just a harder cover on the back. Um, these you'll find in all different sizes. You can see this one's a little bit of a thicker one. There are some that, you know, are a little bit thicker than this, but most of them are a little bit slimmer. So the price is gonna be all over the place. This one they've done like a matte paper with. You'll find that. Um, you know, back and forth, depending on when it was made, the one that you're looking at. But you can see this one retails for like 50 bucks because it is a little bit of a bigger one. Typically, your hardcovers are going to cost more than your trades. If you had a hardback and a trade with the exact same content, you're probably going to find that the hardcover retails for about 5 to $10 more than the standard uh, trade itself. So these are kind of the, the smallest formats uh, for the most part. And, uh, and so if you're looking for kind of the cheapest way to get in and also the most common, these are the two formats that you are going to find. All right, so now let's take a look at the deluxe edition format. Uh, in this format, we're gonna kind of loop in both deluxe editions and omnibus because there are some commonalities between the two, which we'll talk about. But first, to give you an idea of the size difference between this, here was our standard size hardcover, the Man of Steel number one. So you can see uh, Mr. Miracle here at the deluxe edition is a little bit taller. 
And then if we turn these around here, you can get an idea for how much wider it is as well. So you've got some extra space here at the top and at the size. So you do get uh, artwork that is a little bit larger than it would be on a standard um, hardcover like we just saw there. So this is a standard uh, deluxe edition, uh, excuse me. And so you'll see a couple of different things. Um, DC, um, Image, they're normally pretty good about using the actual term deluxe edition. Marvel typically doesn't use deluxe edition. Um, you might see it refer to as like oversized hardcover or sometimes just hardcover now. Um, I believe all of their hardcovers they're coming out with, if, if it's a hardcover, it's a considered a deluxe edition. It's that size. Um, so when they come out with, like, let's say, for example, Fantastic Four by Dan Slott, uh, the next volume of that, when it comes out, it is a deluxe edition size. So hardcover has a dust jacket on it, um, and so that is a good way to know if it is considered a deluxe edition. Now, Image has some deluxe editions that are just hardcover that don't include dust jackets, but they're still following that same format, that same size uh, there. Then you have things like Omnibus. Omnibus are the same height and the same width as a deluxe edition. The only real difference between Omnibus and deluxe edition is really just the branding. Omnibus, there's Marvel, there's DC. Those are the two main kind of lines of, of Omnis. Uh, typically, they collect an entire run of a character um, or, or you know, part of a run from, from their series, um, or it could be from a creative team. So, like, here we have Fantastic Four by Wade and Waringo. There are specific storylines, events, and things like that that are typically collected as omnibus. Now, a couple of things. <laughs> you will find out that size doesn't necessarily matter when it comes to, uh, to omnibus or deluxe editions, for that matter. So, case in point, here is another omnibus this is hawkeye you can see this one's about the same size as mr miracle just a little bit larger but then let me show you this deluxe edition this is x of swords this was an event this was an x-men event and it is considered just a deluxe edition um, again marvel doesn't market it that way but that's what we refer to it as you can see thicker than hawkeye thicker than mr miracle not quite as thick as Fantastic Four here, but still pretty thick and thicker than a lot of other Marvel Omnis, uh, but not considered an Omnibus really just because of that branding. They very easily could have turned this Marvel around, put Omnibus right there and not done a single thing else and called it a day. Um, but they didn't. Um, so that's why this one is still uh, considered a uh, deluxe edition and why I shelve it that way. Now, there's another thing I want to throw into the mix here. You'll, you see Wonder Woman Dead Earth down here at the end. Uh, DC has started a line of black label books, and a lot of these books come in what they call Prestige Plus format. You can see it's, it's the height uh, of a deluxe edition, but when we turn it to the side, you'll see that it's got kind of this folio size here. So when I pull, bring this around... You can kind of get an idea. You see how much further it sticks out there. It's these, you know, not quite magazine size, but kind of. Um, and so there are a few books that come out like this. Um, it just gives you some larger artwork. These books traditionally are printed this way. Um, so this is about the size of the original artwork, whereas like Deluxe Editions and Omnibus, that is actually a larger format for that. So when we talk about Deluxe Editions, um, that's why a lot of people shelve their Deluxe Editions with their Omnibus because they are the same size format and so it does look a little bit better on the shelf. Um, me, I keep all my Omnis together just because I like the continuity of that. Next, I want to talk about a couple of specific formats here. Uh, the first um, are these Rick Remender hardcovers. Now, Image uh, publishes pretty much all of Rick Remender's stuff, at least um, recently, and they use this format. Rick Remender really likes this large uh, format that's even larger than Deluxe Editions. So if I throw Mr. Miracle up here, you can see how much larger this is. You've got um, almost like, I feel like a whole other inch there, um, and it is longer um, or wider as well. And so... They have some other um, creators who, who do publish their, their books like this, but all of Rick Remender's stuff. So if you're looking at Deadly Class, Black Science, Low, Seven to Eternity, all that kind of stuff, um, it's these hardcover formats here. They don't refer to them as deluxe editions. In fact, this one on the inside, if you look at it, it says the word omnibus. 
Again, Marvel and DC use Omnibus to talk about that specific format for them, but if you see it for Image or Dark Horse or someone else, it could be a paperback, it could be just a collection of stories, because that's really all Omnibus means. Um, and so if you see Omnibus for any publisher other than those two, it's probably not going to be in the format like you saw um, you know, the Marvel and DC books. So you're going to see this is a really large format. I really like the size of these books. They look great on a shelf. Um, and I just really like that size and that format. It's it's even more oversized than what you would traditionally see, um, you know, the standard uh, hardcovers and even the deluxe edition. So I really like that. And then the next one I want to talk about are library editions. This is a term that is used by Dark Horse Publishing. You can see we have got Snow Angels here by uh, Jeff Lemire and Jock. Uh, they do a lot of books in this library edition. Uh, Black Hammer notoriously has a lot of library editions, even more are coming out. Uh, Invisible Kingdom, a great book by G. Willow Wilson, just got a recent uh, library edition. Most of them have dust jackets, but not all of them. Uh, Lady Killer by uh, Joelle Jones doesn't have a dust jacket. It's hardcover, just like this one. Um, but you can see, you know, again, another large book. These all have uh, ribbons in them as well. So if you're ever looking at these, you've got that. Also, I really love what they did this. And this is a black um, kind of shine they did to the edge of the pages. But this is another large format. Again, much larger than what is originally printed. And so, again, you get this really great oversized artwork uh, to be able to take a look at along with some really, really great stories. Um, you'll see all of, like... Uh, Mike Allred's Mad Men or a Mad Man is collected this way. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there, but this is another popular way that you can see. So if you hear library edition, it's probably being referred to Dark Horse and their specific line of books here. Next up, we have the Absolute line by DC Comics. Uh, this is pretty much exclusive to DC. Um, now, when you get these books, they're all going to say DC. They used to have some under their Vertigo imprint. So if you're looking at an older printing, it may say Vertigo on it, but it is from the company of DC. And that's a line of books that, again, comes out in a much larger format than what it originally was printed in. Uh, they all come in these really nice hard cases. Um, so typically, they'll have this box outside. And uh, let me go ahead and get rid of that thing. And underneath, you're going to find a very, very kind of large format here. Some of them do have dust jackets, like Absolute Watchmen here, but some of them do not. In fact, I think most of them do not, from what I remember uh, seeing. Uh, like the library editions from Dark Horse, they do include ribbons, so they've got a nice ribbon in here. But they typically have maybe recolored artwork if it's an older work. Um, they have a lot of extras in the back, but it's just a really large format to read for that. So let me show you. So we've got you know, this absolute here. And uh, let's see, let me grab, here's a deluxe edition next to it. So you have an idea of how much bigger it is. So you've got some, some exercise there. And then even over the library editions, let's see. You can see about as, the library editions are about as tall as an absolute is. Uh, the absolute is a little bit wider. Um, but again, a really great way to look at some uh, some great DC artwork. All right, and last but not least, we're going to talk about these two Marvel formats. Uh, we have Hulk Grand Design. This is what they refer to as a Treasury Edition, and then we have Avengers Kree Scroll War, which is considered a Gallery Edition. Honestly, the best way to think about these two is that Treasury Editions are paperback, and Gallery Editions are a hardcover. So when we look at the Hulk Grand Design here, uh, this is a fantastic line of books. Uh, all the Grand Design books come out in this format. They call them Marvel Collectors Specials up here in the corner as well. But you can see just how huge they are, I mean, which is fitting for you know a character like Hulk. Um, but it has you know really great artwork inside, and they've done this for a few different lines. All of the uh, grand design books come out this way, but then also some of their other kind of mini series they've put out in this way, which has been really cool. And then you have Avengers Kree Scroll War. Again, pretty much the same size. The only difference is that this is hardcover. Um, and so they typically reproduce the art um, in these. But one thing that you'll notice on the inside of this is that you get this border kind of around um, because obviously this format that you see here is different than the format that it was originally published the different ratio so you have this border along the side um, inside but this is a really popular um, 
you know, format here. And just to give you an idea, let me grab another deluxe edition here. You can see how much bigger this thing is. I had to back the camera up so I could get everything into frame. But you can see so much taller, very much wider than these deluxe editions. For a book that already is oversized from what the original artwork was, this is even larger. So again, if it's a story you're really passionate about or you really love, that might be a really great way to collect it. All right, and that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful with trying to determine what all of the different sizes are when it comes to these comics. Um, when you see these things solicited or on websites, it gives you a better idea of what size book you are going to get. So you never accidentally order a gallery edition thinking that it's going to be a regular size, uh, you know, if it's not very explicit around the size of the book. And then you have this ginormous thing show up at your house. So this can also help you understand why some things cost the way they do. These uh, absolute editions, while it has less content than an omnibus, you know, have these much larger formats come in these uh, hard boxes, uh, these slip cases. And so, you know, there's a premium for that. And so when you're looking at the content, sometimes it doesn't necessarily relate to the price that you are going to be paying because of the reproduction, sometimes color enhancements, sometimes uh, reproduction, uh, of the artwork. And so it's important to look at that size and really understand the difference of what you're getting here and why you might want to pay 10, 15, 20, $50 more than you would for like a standard edition or a standard hardcover when you get up into some of these larger formats. So hopefully it's helpful. Um, you know, let me know if you have a particular format. Some people don't like Omnis because they're very big and they're a little bit more difficult to read, um, you know, sitting in a normal chair. Some people really love these huge, gorgeous uh, art pieces that we have in here. And some people just really love these, uh, you know, regular trade, uh, um, trade paperbacks. So let me know what you like down in the comments and uh, come back next time for some more collected edition content.